Howdy folks, Jeff Sinkstack here. I want to show you how to edit audio clips on a track in Adobe Audition multi-track session. It's not a horribly complicated concept, but I want to give you a basic feel of how that works. So the first thing we're going to do is import some clips. So to do that, I just double click, double click here inside the uh, Files panel and go track down the four clips that I want to use here, these four guys. I'm selecting them one at a time like that uh, by holding down the control key in Windows and the command key on Mac, and here we go. Now when, I, when you import clips like this, they'll show up inside the editor panel, and the editor panel will display a waveform or the spectral frequency dis display depending on how you last left it. The default way is like that with just a waveform, but if you've worked with it before, then it'll open up in the same way you left it when you last worked with it. But we don't want to work with the individual clips here. We want to put them all on a single track in a multi-track session. So the first thing you need to do is to create a multi-track session. If there is no multi-track session listed here, then uh, when you click on the multi-track button, then it'll ask you, uh, let's, let's create a multi-track session. You can also go File, New, Multi-Track Session. But we'll click this button just to see how that works opens up this dialog box and says what's the name of your session we'll call this uh, uh, audition demo and where do you want to put it I've already got a place selected and then it says what's the sample rate bit depth and what should the master output be should this be mono stereo or 5.1 the surround sound well you take a look at the uh, source audio as a way to determine the sample rate because if you have a different sample rate from your source audio than from your multi-track session, then when you try to import the uh, the audio, it's going to ask you, should we make a duplicate of this to match the uh, session sample rate? So it's best just to make a sample rate in the session that matches your source audio. So we'll take 44.1 and 32-bit floating, which is fine, and mono is the output. We could do stereo. It's not That's not critical, but this sample rate is what's important here. So click OK and that opens up this multi-track session. It displays these various tracks here. We're going to work only in one track. Simplify things, just work in one track. I'll show you how to do a multi-track editing with uh, nine separate uh, uh, layers in another tutorial. So we'll start by taking this first clip, Declaration 1. When you drag it over to the uh, multi-track, the track 1 here, it uh, by default snaps to the uh, beginning. After, but, it, but you can pull it away if you want to. Well, we want it to snap to the beginning, and there's our first track, and you see the waveform there. And what I want to do is I want to trim away the beginning and trim away the end, because we're going to put these four clips down, and when I recorded these guys, I purposely left some head and tail room there, some basically dead air there. So let's just see how that sounds by pressing the space bar or by pressing the uh, play button down here. In Congress, July 4th, 17. You can see that there's a bunch of kind of room noise here and my taking a breath there probably. And but this is really where the audio starts, right before that waveform. So I want to trim to that point. I'm not making a, you know, I'm not really worrying too much about how close I am to that waveform, but that's about a comfortable place to go. And the trim, you just hover your cursor over the beginning of the clip and it turns into the trim tool, which will look familiar if you've worked with uh, other products like Premiere Pro. I'll drag it across and there you go. It will snap to the current time indicator, which is a good thing. This little uh, icon here is a snapping uh, control, and it's on by default, which is it's good to have snapping because then as you drag, it'll snap to the current time indicator, which makes it a more precise edit if you want to edit right to that spot. The thing is, it leaves this gap here, and so what do you do about the gap? Well, uh, in other product, other uh, programs there are keyboard shortcuts you can use to close the gap but in audition I don't know of any keyboard shortcuts that will close the gap for you automatically so you can simply drag it over that's simple enough right or you can right click here and say ripple delete the gap all right now we need to trim off the tail so I need to see where my audio stops here states of America right there the rest of this thing is my taking a breath into the microphone so we'll trim it right to there using the trim tool again. And there you have it. We've now done a very simple trim of one clip. I'm going to lay down the other three clips now. Declaration 2, and it'll snap to the end of this guy. There's number 2. Now it goes off the end of the uh, track here, so you really can't add another one to the end without being able to see the end. So you can press the backslash key, 
the uh, key above the enter or the return key on your keyboard and that'll display the all, all the clips whatever clips have been added to your uh, track so I'm going to drag the next one over now same thing again it's going to go off the edge so I'll press the backslash key again and instead of the backslash I could press the minus key the hyphen key to uh, shrink down the view as well plus key expands hy minus shrinks down to a certain point then stops going any further We'll do the next one, number four, and put that at the end. Snap it to the end. Oops, looks like it didn't quite snap. There we go. Now I got it. I'll press the backslash key again. So I got these four clips, but I want to trim off the beginning. So I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit by pressing the plus key, and I'll press the space bar to play it. When, so that means no. a good place to start right there. If I trim over, now I want to fill this gap. So I right click and say ripple delete the gap. But before I do that, I want you to see the whole uh, track so you can see everything, how they all move together. So I'll right click now again, ripple delete, cap. Everybody slides over to fill that gap. And that's the uh, basic <laughs> process here uh, to uh, trim clips. Let me just do one more here at the end. Impel them to the separation. So again, this other audio here is just some mic noise and stuff. We'll snap over like that. I'll trim this next guy. We hold. Declaration of Independence, in case you haven't already figured this out. And the Pursuit of Happiness. There we go. And we'll do one more here. That too. It's pretty easy to make these little edits. There's a little uh, trick that you can do to make what are called crossfades. Let's see how this works first. Though. Affect their safety and happiness. Isn't it nice to use happiness twice in the in the uh, Declaration of Independence. Now if I drag this thing over like this and then continue dragging, you'll see it automatically makes a little crossfade. See those little lines there? But what that does though, of course, is that it uh, takes away some of the head and tail frames. And so if you're going to do a crossfade like that, an automatic crossfade, you probably should have more head and tail frames at the beginning so you don't have them sort of bumping up against each other. But let's see how that sounds here. Which impel them to the separation. We hold these through. So you see now the edit's a little too tight. So I'll just undo that and just have a bump up against it by going ripple delete, gap, and I'll ripple delete this guy too. But you can automatically make crossfades if you want to. So now we have created this four clip thing, and there's a, probably a proper pause between each clip. States of America. When in the course of human... There's that one, and we'll go to the next one here, see how that little pause works. The separation. We hold these truths to be... Okay. Okay. ...pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights. Now if I want to enhance the quality of this clip, I could uh, do uh, one of three things if I want to apply an effect to it. I could uh, select a clip like this to say that clip is something I want to apply an effect to. And I can double click it and open it up here in the editor panel and apply an effect from the effects rack or from this effects menu here. Okay, that's the basic way that you can add an effect to a clip here inside the editor panel. But we're working inside the multi-track session, so I want to go back there. Here I can add an effect to a clip by going to the effects rack here and just click on clip effects. So if I add an effect now, something really obvious, let's say I'll do a reverb. Or let's do an echo, that's even more obvious. Call it echo. And we'll just uh, preview that. And to assume among assume the powers among of the... Powers. So I'll say that's fine. And now it'll be on this clip. Earth, the separate. If I go to the next clip, these truths, it won't be on this clip. So I can apply an effect directly to a clip within the multi-track session by using the clip effects side of the effects rack. I'm going to undo that because so I want to do another process here, and that is to export the entire uh, set of clips. I can also apply effect uh, to the entire track if I click on click on track effects. I can apply an effect to the entire track the same way I did before, and then export if I want to. But I'm going to do a, kind of the reverse of that process and show you, just show you how to export this whole thing now that you're done editing it. Then you can bring it back in and apply effects that way. So let's just show you how to do that. So you go multi-track, mix down the new file. Now typically you say mix down, you're mixing down multiple tracks, but in this case it's just a track. So we'll go down entire session, which means the whole set of four clips there. And it's going to mix it down immediately into a file and puts it right here with a, the name of the uh, session and then with a mix down one after it. And there's a little asterisk there after it that means that this is something that hasn't been saved yet. There's an asterisk there that says, you know, this thing's ready to be saved to your hard drive. In Congress, July 4th, there's the 
four clips together now as one. And if I'm, uh, you know, uh, if I want to put some effects on here right now, I could, but I just want to save this and bring it back in later. So let's just save this guy just by clicking on it. Go File, Save. And we'll, instead of calling it the Mixdown, we'll call it the Demo um, To Be Edited. There we go. And I'll save that. And now it still exists here. Now I can apply an effect to it. Uh, we can apply it before, but now I'll apply an effect now. I want to add some uh, uh, presence to this, make it a little more emphatic. And so there's a couple of effects that I can do. I can apply to it. I'll go Effects. I'll go to uh, Special. There's a thing called the Vocal Enhancer. Vocal Enhancer uh, just takes away some of the popped, popped, popped peas or sibilance and also compresses the audio into a narrow range to make it a little more emphatic. Uh, pick the male or the female or music. Well, I'll pick male, and I'm not really clear why they have a preset up here, which is also called female male music, so my guess is whether you click the little radio button here or click here, you get the same thing. But if, by the way, if you do have any kind of question about what an effect does, all you need to do is click this little information button. And that opens up a little uh, help file that talks about that specific effect, which is kind of a nice little feature. Let's go back to that effect then. So I click apply now, and it's going to apply it to the uh, entire clip. And now it's done. And when you select an entire clip, you always get this kind of fuzzy look down here in the spectral frequency display, and you get a white uh, background here in the waveform. To get rid of that, just click anywhere, and it gets rid of it. It'll, it'll make the sound a little more emphatic. It'll look like this now. The chorus of human events. It be sounds kind of... When in the chorus of human... I'll, I'll do Control z and see how it sounds before. When in the chorus of human... And now Control shift shift z to... Put it back on. But when in the course of this is a little bit of a stronger feel to it. You can do, by the way, to undo something in the Mac, it's Command Z. And to redo something, it's Command Shift Z. So let me go back and apply one more effect to this. I want to apply a reverb. So I go Effects, Reverb. And there's all kinds of uh, reverb possibilities here. And I don't need to explain them all. I think experimenting with them is f will be fun. But I would suggest uh, trying, let's say, Studio Reverb, because that's kind of sort of the simplest one. And there's some presets here, and so uh, this is somebody speaking, presumably uh, outdoors, perhaps. So I'll just um, do a vocal reverb small. I want to get too carried away here. And you have these little control, these controls here, which you can then adjust after the fact. But let's just see what small reverb sounds like. Human events, it becomes necessary. So it sounds like I'm in this kind of a building, and you can adjust the so-called wet and dry. Dry means what percentage of the original audio will be played, and then wet means what percentage of the echoey or reverb audio will be played. So the, the wetter it is, the more uh, a reverb there is, the drier it is, the less reverb. So let's just listen to that for a while. For one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station. So you see how as I added it, uh, the wet percentage, it got a little more echoey, a little more reverb. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit. It's kind of maybe too much for me, and I'll take the dry up a little bit. To which the laws of nature, if your 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 percentages are, are greater than 100%, it just means it'll be louder overall. So it's not really critical that you, know, you, you try to work out something that equals 100 when you add them up. And of nature's God, entitle them. A decent respect to the opinion. So there you go. So once uh, I'm happy with uh, how it sounds, and I've you know, previewed it here, I just click Apply, and it applies to, and it applies that effect to it. Notice that got a, the uh, waveform got a little bit smaller because it added up to something less than 100. And we'll play it. We've connected them with another. And to assume among the powers... Now it's got a little bit of reverb. I'm thinking it's not quite loud enough, so you can use this little volume control here that affects the entire clip just by pulling it to the right a bit, and you can see the volume change there. And typically, you don't want your volume to be uh, much above minus 3 dB when you're doing just something like a simple narration like that. So now that I've done all that, you'll see it has a little asterisk next to it again, saying this thing is uh, ready to be saved if you want to save it. So if I save it, it will replace whatever file you know that it that previously existed with the previous condition of this file. So be aware that when you save something after you've worked on it, it will replace whatever uh, was on the hard drive to begin with. So that's why I almost always work with uh, duplicates of the original audio files and put the original audio files in some safe place that I just don't touch. But now I'll just, I can press Control or Command S, but I'll go to File 
and save and now this guy is filed this guy is saved and uh, that's basically uh, the approach that we can use one of the approaches we can use to put a bunch of clips together inside the multi-track session on a single track and then mix it down and apply some effects after the fact of course I could have applied the effects before I mixed it down but this is just a, another approach to uh, how you can uh, do some editing in Adobe Audition